Hi DIY friends, Shannon the Daily DIYer here to show you the most impressive and also these are some of my favorite Dollar Tree DIYs that you can make too on the cheap. These broomsticks and also their plungers are among my favorite Dollar Tree items to grab for larger projects and this first project is going to be using both. First up, we're gonna create a plant stand or a shelving unit that is about four foot long and almost four foot tall. And to achieve that, we also need some wood. So whether you're buying new or using scrap wood, you're gonna need a one by 12 by about eight foot long. And also some wood screws that are one and five eighths inch size. We're also gonna need some Dollar Tree items, which I'll show you here in just a second, but we're gonna cut down our wood to size first. If you don't have a miter saw, you can also use the hardware store. A lot of times they will cut wood down for you for free. You're gonna need a four foot long piece of one by 12 and also two 16 inch lengths of one by 12. This is gonna be the bottom of our plant stand and also two shelves. Go ahead and sand all of your wood pieces down and then we also need to work on our broomstick handles from Dollar Tree. You're gonna need six of these total. You wanna take all the stickers off and also remove the plastic handle. Now I'm gonna show you how you can easily screw holes into these broomstick handles. If you take a large nail and puncture a hole, then you can go ahead and take a metal drill bit and drill right through these handles. I also wanted to include a list to show you the specifications of where those holes need to be drilled into each one of the broomstick handles. So I'm sure this kind of sounds like a lot of detail, but I just want to make sure I put every detail in there to make this easy for you to also recreate. And once we start putting this together, this is all going to make complete sense. So now it's time to start using our one and five eighths inch size screws to put this all together. It also helps to pre-drill holes into the sides of your wood pieces. This will keep your wood from splitting or cracking as we're building it. So what I'm doing here is just, like I said, pre-drilling holes with my drill bit. And then what we're gonna do is start putting this together with those poles as the legs and feet to our stand. So now with the longer four foot board as our bottom to this, we're gonna start adding the broom poles along each side and each side is going to get three poles total. It's helpful now that we pre-drilled all those holes into those broomstick handles as well as into the wood. You have to let me know down in the comments below if you use power tools or not. It was scary when I first got started too, but being able to be creative and build has been a fun creative outlet for me over the years. I'll have a playlist linked in the corner of your screen for easy beginner wood projects if you'd like some inspiration or motivation to get started. And now you can finally start seeing this take shape. One detail I wanted to mention was that the plastic ends of these broom poles are the ones that are on the floor or on the ground. They are gonna be the feet to this shelving unit. Now we can go ahead and take those 16 inch long boards and secure those onto the end. So this is gonna create a middle and a top shelf. Yep, I actually really enjoy building with my hubby. He and I just kind of flow and mesh really well and can kind of do things together. So I appreciate that and I love whatever he offers to help. And now you can see how our plant stand has really come together now, but now we need to focus on the tops of this unit. And that's where these plunger handles are gonna come in handy. We do need to remove the stickers off of those and also the rubber pieces. And we're gonna add these onto the tops and you'll see here why in just a second. We do need to cut these down to size so they will fit in between the poles on each side. Again, you don't have to have a large power tool like my miter saw to cut these plunger handles down. You can actually use a handsaw and a miter box too. You can find these inexpensively for only about $10 at Walmart and I will make sure to link one of those down in the description box below. And 
And now we can go ahead and add those handles onto the top. Again, pre-drilling holes into the plunger handles and then adding screws to secure them into place. So here we have secured three of those handles into place. That's giving our shelving unit some stability. We're gonna add another element to this piece though, and that is a hanging rail. So this is a long dowel rod, which I found inexpensively at Walmart. We're gonna also cut this down to size, pre-drill holes, and secure that with screws onto the top. We did find that this unit had a little bit of sway back and forth, so to fix that, we're adding a little piece of scrap wood to the back side and between the broom handles on the back sides of these shelves, just using some wood glue and some brad nails to keep that in place. And that seemed to really help with this problem. And now for the fun part, adding all of our plants. I'm so glad we added this addition of a large hanging rail. So then we can incorporate hanging plants to this stand too. And then there is so much room to be able to display other plants on the shelves and even on that bottom board. Another idea is add hooks off to the side, off of those handles. So that way you can hang and store even more items off the side as well. There are so many other ways you can utilize this piece too, besides just as a plant stand. I love the idea of taking this and putting it in a kid's bedroom for toy storage, turn it, turning it into a play space for kids' costumes. You could use it in a bedroom for clothing, use it in a kitchen for a pantry to store food on. So, so many different ideas that you can take this and use it and utilize it to fit your needs. This is another big project. You're going to need five broom handles for from Dollar Tree. This is a project that I created over Christmas time to make an oversized lit up star. However, I'm bringing this back because with 4th of July soon to come, I think this would be great for summertime too. What I'm doing here is using a handsaw and miter box to trim off the plastic ends of all of these broom handles. Next, here's a little tip. You can use a heat gun to heat up the adhesive that's underneath the handles to make it easier easy to remove the plastic pieces. Now you're gonna need a piece of scrap wood to protect your work surface. Take a hammer and we're gonna hammer down flat both ends of all of the brooms. That way we have a nice flat area to then attach all of these pieces together at those points. 
And now we're going to use a combination of super glue and hot glue. The hot glue is going to dry quickly. But the super glue is what is going to keep these pieces together long term. So we're going to layer these to create a point. And then we're also going to reinforce with some black electrical tape, which you can also find at Dollar Tree. This does two things. It's going to keep everything together, but it's also going to keep any kind of rainwater or moisture out of our broom poles. This is going to be extremely important, especially if it's going to be going outside. Now all it is is just basically creating our star shape going from one corner and crossing over until we have all of those points connected to create a star. Once you have all of the points attached, we have our star, of course, but now we also have a lot of wiggle room in the middle where the crossover points connect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some more of our electrical tape and secure those cross points. And then I had to hold this up so you can see just how big this star is. Pretty cool. And for a bargain price of only $1.25 per broomstick, brings us to only $6.25. Of course, now we do need to add our string lights. So these are just regular Christmas lights that you can use outdoors. So what I'm doing is twisting it around the broom poles and adding some electrical tape every so often to make sure they don't slide down or move around. So I had to show you what this looks like all lit up. Of course, this is during the daytime, but at nighttime, of course, this turns into a beautiful lit up star. Again, great for Christmas, summertime, for a patio, or 4th of July. Back to these amazing plungers. I told you guys I love them. I even have a video that is everything made from plunger handles from the Dollar Tree. I will link that down below too. This one, we are going to make a awesome DIY side table. So again, I have my handsaw and miter box. I'm cutting down 3 8 inch size dowel rods from Walmart to 16 inches long. Two of them you're gonna leave at 16 inches. The other two, we are gonna cut those in half, basically removing the 3 8 inch size right from the middle, giving us four shorter pieces. You're also gonna need four plunger handles. We're gonna start creating some pilot holes. Those shorter dowel rods are going to fit down into the plunger handles. So you just wanna kind of measure down about two or three inches and then add your holes. You do wanna make sure that your drill bit is also 3 8 inch size so your dowel rods will fit down in there. And we're gonna need four of those all with the holes at the same heights, one on the top and one on the bottom. Now we're gonna take some wood glue and insert those dowel rods. Each set of two legs is going to get a long dowel rod and two short ones. And we're gonna have the shorter ones on top for one and on the bottom for the other. And I know that's probably a little bit confusing, but as you see me putting this together, you'll be able to see what I mean.
So the reason we did these opposite is so that once we cross these in the center, we'll have a full piece on the top and a full piece on the bottom. And each one will then have a cross piece opposite too. So I marked the center of the longer one. We're gonna use a combination of hot glue and wood glue here and also some jute to tie this all together that is going to reinforce those center connection points. And because all of these pieces are made from wood, you can stain this if you want. I decided to go ahead and paint mine white with some white chalk paint. And now that our piece is dry from being painted, we can go ahead and add that jute in here, just wrapping it and tying it so that it's all completely secure. One end of our plunger handles has that sort of routed out twisted end. Since we have our jute out, we're gonna go ahead and twist some around that twisted end. It's gonna cover it up and it'll also give it some nice detail to our side table too. Then all there's left to do is add a top onto our table. I had this woven tray on hand that fit perfectly, so I went ahead and used that. But if you don't have something like this, you can even use a pizza pan from Dollar Tree too. Now let's break away from the broom handles and the toilet plungers for a second. We are gonna use these huge barbecue skewers from Dollar Tree that are 32 inches long for this next project to create an antique style window. We're also gonna be pairing this with some one by twos. And again, I'm using my miter saw, but you can absolutely use a handsaw and miter box for this if you don't have a large power tool. And of course you can also create your frame however big you want. Mine is specifically going to be two pieces cut to 32 inches long and two pieces cut to 16 inches long. We're basically creating a really simple rectangle frame. So you'll see those shorter pieces are sandwiched into the longer pieces on the end. And there's a couple ways you can put these together. You can use long screws and go from the end into the shorter pieces on all four corners, or if you have a Craig jig or some type of pocket hole unit, you can do that too, which is what I'm doing here. This creates a really strong connection and bond. So you can see just how strong it is, but either way works. Use whatever you have on hand, and if you just have wood glue, clamp it, and you can even use just wood glue too. So we're gonna do that on all four corners, creating our rectangular frame. And now comes into play those Dollar Tree bamboo skewers. We're gonna make the decorative inserts for this frame. Again, handsaw and miter box cuts these down really, really easy. We need to create sort of a channel for these to sit in. So first thing first, we're gonna hot glue down some skewers all the way around the center of the frame.
Now it's time to cut down smaller pieces to create the decorative part for the inside. What I'm doing is using some pliers to cut these down. You are gonna need seven at 13 inches long and 14 at three and a half inches long. Now this is gonna change if you created a frame in a different size, but these will work if you use the same size measurements that I'm using. I also went through the frame and marked off where I wanted these decorative pieces to go to make sure it would all line up correctly. And then we can go ahead and start putting these pieces together. So I was inspired by some antique stained glass windows for this and I'm basically using some hot glue to create Y shapes. So you'll have the longer one on the bottom and two smaller ones at the top, making sure they are evenly spaced apart. I do have a silicone mat here. This helps a lot protect your surface. I will make sure to link it down in the description box below. You can find them on Amazon. I use bigger ones now because they are so handy. You can paint on them and they wipe right off. Glue comes right off on them. And whenever you're do, doing projects like this, it comes in handy so you don't get, don't get hot glue everywhere. So again, went ahead, created, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these total and let them sit and dry completely before going ahead and adding those into the frame. It's always fun to see after you have made all of these little elements and then piecing it all together to really see it come to life. It's such a really neat process. So you wanna keep your pliers handy so you can trim your pieces down to size if you need to at all so that it all comes together evenly. Just using some hot glue on the back. These are all resting on those longer skewers that we lined around the inside of the frame first. And once this is all set and ready to go, you can flip it over and you'll see your beautiful piece. Go ahead and stain it at this point or if you like paint it like I did. I sort of wanted a weathered wood look on mine. However, I think it looks so pretty just in the raw wood. Keep in mind, we did use hot glue. So if you're going to stain it, it's not gonna stain the glue parts but if you paint it, it will cover up those connector points. What I'm doing is using some gray chalk paint first as a base coat to my window, and then I came in with a dry brush technique to give this a stained or a weathered wood look, I should say, on this piece. This is still one of my absolute favorite DIYs that I've done. It is so pretty and you would never know that those were bamboo skewers from Dollar Tree creating the design. I made this DIY a couple years ago and I still am obsessed with it. You're gonna need two of these plastic garden trim pieces from Dollar Tree. And yes, I even have a hacks video full of ideas of how you can use these two. So I'll link that down below. We're gonna start by taking that first garden piece and cutting it in half and also cutting off all of the extra pieces from the side and the feet off the bottom. This next one, we're just gonna cut out the pretty scrolly pieces from the middle. It definitely helps to use some 10 snips for this. You can find these really inexpensively for about five or six dollars at Walmart, and I will link those down below too. So if you're cutting through some soft plastic, these come in handy for crafting projects. So I did decide to cut the points off of these scrolly pieces too, and then I'm gonna show you how we're going to lay this all out.
So here is the basic layout. We're gonna cross those two at the top and lay the other two pieces end to end. The very bottom of this piece is a one by 12. That's about 24 inches long. That's gonna be the base of our door. And then using some really inexpensive trim pieces to trim this all out. And then here is a look at all of the pieces kind of laid out so you can see them piece by piece how I cut them. I used scrap pieces so some I did have to sort of piece together. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some of this double-sided adhesive tape to put this all together. It's basically got a plastic back on it and then you take the plastic off and it becomes a double-sided adhesive. There's no mess with it and I'll make sure to link it down in the description box below and it is permanent it, so this is not going to come back apart after we get it affixed onto the wood. This is perfect for using with all different types of materials, so it's going to work great with the plastic onto the wood too. So here is our wood frame all laid out. Now it's time to go ahead and stain it or paint it at this point. I like to use this traditional burnt umber acrylic paint. It goes on a lot like a regular paint and it dries like acrylic paint so it doesn't take very long to dry but it really looks a lot like wood stain. So I love that you get that look without having to wait so long for it to dry. And now we can go ahead and add our plastic decorative pieces onto the back side of this door. You just kind of add a few little double-sided adhesive parts onto the edging so where it won't be seen when you flip your door over. So here's a look at the back side. I did go ahead and flip this over and where the top decorative pieces were, they were still kind of wobbly. So I added some more double-sided adhesive to keep those together and added one more piece of decorative wood piece to really trim this out and make sure it looked nice and cohesive. So again, not a bad looking piece for using some scrap wood, scrap trim, and two garden trim pieces from Dollar Tree. Again, I don't think that anybody would ever know that this plastic that looks a lot like wrought iron was just from Dollar Tree. If you're looking for more Dollar Tree hacks, click on one of the videos that's popping up on your screen now. Please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you are new, and I wanna thank you all so much for joining me today. I will see you in the next one.